Hi guys and welcome to another quick video tutorial here on the Kiki Manny Photography and Orms blog. My name is Manny and in today's tutorial I want to show you guys part 7 about Photoshop basics and tools. Um, if you haven't viewed any of the rest please fall back in the blogs. Alright so in today's tutorial pretty much again just want to show you guys two new tools and that is pretty much the blur tool, sharpen tool, smudge tool, then also the dodge and burn tool and sponge tool. Alright so let's get started on the blur tool really quickly. Today I'm just going to say Command J again, duplicate my layer or say Control J for my Windows friends. Then we're going to rename that to Retouch Layer. Retouch Layer over here. Alright, so let's get working on the Retouch Layer. I'm just going to zoom in very closely now. And basically, if okay, something weird happening here. If I'm very close to the eye now, I'm going to use my Blur tool now. As you guys can see already at the top, our application menu has changed again. So in here, some presets, your some brush sets again, your brush panel if you want to mode. You can choose again from a few different blending options in here. Then obviously your strength, how strong you want to apply that blurring effect, and sample on all layers. No, you don't want that. So just on our current layer, we're going to blur a little bit. So what it does, like it says, already blurring. So if I'm going to go over the eye, it just breaks those pixels and blurs and blurs quite a lot. Sometimes comes in handy if you Photoshop, but to be honest, don't use it too much. Rather go to filters and work with blur over here and Gaussian blur or some different blur uh, effects over here. That I would prefer. Okay, then over here again, sharpen tool. Also, I'm not a fan of the sharpen tool. Again here at the top, all our applications pretty much the same like the blur effect. Then with sharpen, you can just go over here, over your area, and it will sharpen that a little bit. Basically, it just breaks more and more pixels and just sharpens those edges. For me, not really a useful tool at all. I never use this tool on my images. Rather, again, go on to filter and just say sharpen here and use sharpen edges or unsharp mask and use with these filters. So that's one tool again. Smart tool also same application menu as well again and pretty much what smudge tool also does if you hold down your pen or your mouse and click and you can just smudge areas like I can do now at the moment you can also drag areas a little bit to be honest I also don't work a lot with this tool rather working with the filter and liquefier um, but if you want to create some really artistic effects you can really use this tool and just go nuts with it to be honest I don't really use it a lot then as well what I want to talk quickly, I just want to go and delete my retouch layer and create that again just so that we are fresh from a new start. Um, what I want to talk about is the dodge and burn tool. Pretty much just down here, dodge and burning tool. Now what the dodge and burn tool is like back in the days where you were like in the dark room and dodge and burning stuff on the images just to brighten the background or lighten or darken the background, lighten the foreground. That stuff applies exactly to the same way like we do today. Just nowadays with Photoshop you use dodge tool. And especially at the top we've got a new application menu again again some new brush nibs and brush sizes you can again change your brush um, panel over here adjust your brush just on its own then range you can say shadows midtones or highlights these come in very handy so work with this I mostly use midtones or if I work in the shadows obviously shadows if I'm working on the highlights you can use the highlights now I'm going to use the highlights and exposure, not normally going to set my exposures to 50%, normally at 10% and always keep it as 10% and work it a little bit, little bit, little bit so you're not overdoing it. Then protect tones, yes I want to protect my tones. Then also another trick quickly, uh, control alt again. With my brush I don't use a hard edge, I use a very feathered edge, then take it all the way down and now I'm just applying it a little bit to the nose and just dodging there a little bit. Over here on the cheeks maybe you want to just dodge that highlights a little bit. I can change that again and go back to my midtones and this basically means that I'm painting in here next to the m nose and just dodging these midtones a little bit over here as well and you um, as you guys can see I'm stroking and stroking and stroking so I'm applying it a little bit a little bit a little bit not too much not all on one and just going nuts apply it a little bit and a little bit okay say on the teeth maybe or even if you want to do it in the shadows just select the shadows and then over here you have to apply it apply it apply it again you can also change your exposure up say to 50% almost 
and then you can do it in here and you can see that it starts to get brighter and brighter and brighter but it just breaks more and more pixels so in the future I'm going to show you another trick how to do this or how to do this actually better for now this comes in handy just if you like want to highlight the areas that are highlighted or want to work a little bit in the highlights then also the burn tool pretty much works exactly the opposite it just darkens areas or it burns areas again so if you want to just darken your areas a little bit you can darken that actually on the skin a little bit on the hairs a little bit so you can darken everything in here so we're working in the midtones again I'm gonna go to shadows and turn that up to say 20% and now I can actually burn that just on the hair a little bit and just create a little bit more of depth in that hairs and just like I show you guys now I'm just stroking 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 not too much just apply with one big stroke and painting because then you're darkening it quite a lot stroke 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 not all at once okay so that's also how I work with a burn tool and then sponge tool comes in handy sometimes if you want to either desaturate or saturate a little bit but to be honest I don't really work a lot with this tool I would rather go to adjustment layers and create a new and saturation layer uh, adjustment layer over here back to our navigator there back to our um, panel over here and what it basically does with the sponge tool as you guys can also see our application bar changed again here at the top you and you have two different modes either saturate or desaturate so I'm going to say desaturate now and you can use the flow to 100% or say 50% Okay, it's going to back out 50%. And now basically when you paint, say I'm painting over the skin, it will just desaturate the skin all the way. So I'm just painting all over this and you can just desaturate stuff. The more you paint, the more it desaturates and more and more desaturating. Okay, if I'm going to change my mode over here to saturate and say for instance I'm going to paint on the arm and on the skin, have a look how more and more color intensive it gets. More saturation and more and more and more. It just burns out those pixels already. So like I said before, not too much of a fan of this tool. I'd rather go over to adjustment and create a hue and saturation layer and do it manually and I can later on trigger it a little bit more or bit less and tune that again a little bit. Okay, yeah, so basically this was my quick tutorial about those new tools. If you guys have still have any questions, please feel free to write me to team at mannyphotography.co.za. My name is Manny. Thank you guys for watching and see you all next week in another small tutorial. Bye-bye.